I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Are you ready to win at the game of life? Well, throw out that rule book and get down to the business of being the best and most authentic version of you. Welcome to the Human Design Podcast. We're changing the rules around success, abundance, purpose, love, and life, where we're creating a planet where everyone can thrive in a world that loves and supports each other. I'm your host, Emma Dunwoody, a qualified master coach, human design expert, podcaster, and entrepreneur that is living the life of my dreams, breaking all the rules while doing it, making a huge impact, and living my design and manifesting miracles on the daily. Join me as I break down and simplify everything you need to live in alignment with your human design, teach you how to recondition your unconscious mind for greatness, and to take back your power so you can manifest your heaven on earth and serve the rest of the planet at the same time time. It's time to give up the fear and step into your highest potential, to reach for the stars, to know and live your greatness. It's what you deserve and it's what the planet really needs from you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Before you get into this transits episode, this is your monthly reminder to go to the show notes and check out the body graph chart software. I know you've heard us talk about this before, so I'll keep this very short and very sweet. But if you want to know the tool that we've used to bring in over 20,000 new leads and five figures in passive revenue into our business, then go check it out. It's amazing. Stop sending people away to other people's websites to get their human design chart. Instead, use this tool to put it on your own website. You won't regret it. And use the code human design podcast, all lowercase, all together, human design podcast to get 50% off for a year. Okay, that's all from me and enjoy the transits. Hey, hey, and welcome everyone to today's episode. It is transit time again. So of course I have the amazing Yvette Mayer here with me. Hey, hey Yvette. Hello, I'm very excited. Let's do this transit thing again and talk about all the emotions that have been happening of late. Oh my oh. God. I, do you know what? I watched a J-Lo T sent me a, the, the preview to JLo's movie or whatever it is that comes out today. I'm in tears. I'm literally watching this preview and I'm crying. No. I'm like, I know how she feels. Oh you know, like goodness. she's talking about how her success is great, but it's been hard, you know, like how she has to keep showing up and whatever. But it, when she's yeah. just beautiful and angelic and all those things, oh. like, ah, it was just like, Crazy. She wound you then, right in with your emotional energy and your line three and all the like, it's hard until it gets easier. Yeah. Yep. And I tell you what, it was that whole like, wow, hello. And I actually think I said, I must have watched it and then walked out and gone, God, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm so emotional. And my eldest, Coop, goes, Mom, it's a full moon. Even I know that. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's yeah, totally yeah. crazy. But hey, let's talk about it. Let I'll let you lead for a little bit. Tell us um, hey. where are we going to start? Are we going to review whatever month yeah, what you know, has it been? February, of course. It's been February. Where we're going to start is to take a moment to celebrate the fabulous Emma Dunwoody having another circle around the sun, which happened Thank yesterday you. as we record. I just want to give you so much love and gratitude on behalf of your entire community, if I have the right to do that. But we all gain so much from you, your wisdom, your heart, your passion, the way you build community. Seriously, uh, I just wanted to really make sure that since we're in Gate 37, which is your personality son, we talked about the fact that this is you, this is who you are and, and what you create in the world. So thank you. Thank you. Far out. That It just means so much to me. Um, sometimes I think that because I'm such an introvert, you know, it's kind of like, God, is it actually having an impact? And I tell you what, I get so much love all the time. So it's absolutely yeah. my unresourceful ego that's, you know, not fully yeah. receiving all of the love. I am practicing. I'm doing better every day. Yeah. Um, and thank you so much for your words. You, it's been human design has been a gift in so many ways for me. Mm. But one specific way is really understanding my superpower of community. Like I would never, never have realized, like I would be 
walking around, like still wondering what to do because wow. community never, as an introvert, never kind of occurred to me yet. This is my heart, my soul. I mean, my HDX people, my mastermind, we're just launching the mastermind at the moment. Yeah. In fact, when this goes to air, you will have like 24 hours to join to, to change your life, people, if there's any spots left by the time this goes to air. So freaking do yeah. it. Yvette did it. Listen to this. I've been there. I've done it. It was life-changing. It was game-changing for my business. Do it. Yeah, it's just the best. So, um, yeah, I'm so grateful for human design and just being able to really see the gifts that lie within me instead of constantly trying to find things that my conditioning said should be there but yeah. you know actually aren't my superpower so yeah. so grateful so and then you know in you finding human design and stepping into this power for yourself you've created a massive massive ripple effect and it's not even just the people in your community that are on your instagram it touches the lives of so many others that are the family members or the community of the community. And I think that's so special. It's spectacular. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my line five friend. You know what we're like. We we're we're here to make an impact. We wanna we wanna yeah. make a difference. So yeah. it just yeah. makes my heart sing. Thank you so much. No, oh, you're so welcome. And so with that, yes, we are in gate 37 right now and we're in the 37 through until the end of February uh, and, it, and it moves only uh, in early March. So 37 and Emma's energy and this energy of the community and family is, is kind of the bigger picture of what we're experiencing right now. But yes, if we trace back over the month that has been uh, of February, we began with some good drive style energy, root focused energy. And then midway through the month, it moved into a series of solar plexus gates. And what I have personally experienced during this time, I'm a non-sacral. I avoid emotions -emotional. as much as possible. Emma's emotional. So we have kind of the different perspectives on how it feels to have active solar plexus gates and, and you know they all have their unique flavor uh i will say that as gate 30 made its way into the chart which or into the sun placement which is the gate of feelings i felt like the wheels came off for me and everything was more intense and more roller coastery and and then I observed that the people in my community were also not in great headspace, dealing with shadows, and I'm like, here we go, strap on in, people, because this is early in this uh, this run of gates that, that are yeah. solar plexus. When energy. was the, remind me when the 30 was? It was mid-month, specifically around the 14th to the 19th. Yeah. I think it's, I feel like the 30 is one of those gates just work. I don't have it personally, mm. but with so many people that do have it, you know, it really is. Um, it's one that can have quite quite a significant impact, especially if you're really attached to those expectations instead of like flowing with the experiences. But yeah, I feel like it's a biggie. Yeah, and look, um, in the gift, it's more about passion and it's about being intentional and focusing your emotions on those resourceful style of passions, things that uh, you want to really put your time and energy into. And that's a beautiful expression of this gate. But it's so interesting to me that, especially as a non-sacral, that as soon as this run of feelings comes through, I find it hard to stay out of the shadow of it. And it's like, why? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and not non solar plexus, like non emotional. You keep mm. you keep saying non sacral. It's like oh sorry, oh my god, I've been some, saying... I reckon there's I reckon there's something in there. Like you need to go have a look at that. Oh, um, that's interesting. Non solar like, plexus, non solar plexus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so funny, huh? Um, yeah, yeah I, I think it's really fascinating being an emotional authority. You know, like having that definition and really watching how. You guys, I mean, obviously I get get affected by other people's emotional energy as well, but I just watch you guys, the non-emotional beings, and it can just be 
such a roller coaster. I do, I really feel for you because when it gets amplified, it's, I don't know, it's big. It, it can be such a uh, left hook, you know, or a gut punch as I often refer yeah. to. It, you know? Like, oh, yeah. God, where did that come from? Yeah. So if you're listening, regardless of whether, and I'm going to say the right word, you have to, uh, defined solar plexus or not, there has been more intense energy around. Uh, Mid-month February, definitely, this was showing up in my circles and it kind of felt like it moved through because soon after that we went into gate 55, gate of abundance, and I personally felt a, a, a lovely energetic shift at that time. Uh, and we both have a lot of intense, happy, positive vibes around the 55. And so we, I, I really felt that more bigger picture, collective, out of my own shadows and into what's best for everybody else. I don't know about you, Anne, how have you felt kind of later in the month? Yeah, I was just reflecting actually on um, my HDX community and Elijah finished up and um, Elizabeth is teaching in there at the moment. And again, I'm just getting this feedback that I always get with my HDX community that they they are the pinnacle of um, groups to teach because they are 100% in, they all comment, they ask questions, they get involved, they're very active and they change from session to session to session. They take the action, they do the thing. Yeah. And it just makes me think that, you know, with that 55 energy, you know, like I do not see any victim, you know, the shadow of the 55 yeah. in this yeah. HDX community. They all, um, and it's interesting, sometimes on a rare occasion, we might see a post in the group that that is kind of coming from that shadow or the victim place. And the way my whole community works with it and, and handles it is like really lifts this person up, but also really helps them to see that they're just, you know, giving their power away. Yeah. And I think that that is something that I've seen a lot in my community um, in the last couple of weeks. And we actually just did a class. I just ran a class on the new paradigm well, and amazing. we broke it down and had a crack at it. And I was kind of given intuitively a, a way, a framework to look at it through. And um, I feel like it was really, really powerful. And again, like that was just this, obviously we talked about the 55 because it's the, the big player or the, the, the thing that kicks off the new paradigm or the theme that kicks off the new paradigm. And I just felt like it's a large theme of the whole class. It was like giving people the keys to freedom. Yeah, absolutely. And as a very uh, loyal member of HDX who loves what you do in there, that was one of the best classes that I've attended. It was absolutely fantastic, especially because there's different ways of looking at the new paradigm and, and the lens that you did this class through, I mean, it really made the power of Elijah's teachings sing even more powerfully. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought it, it felt like a more grounded in reality but more a more positive look at the changes that we're experiencing at a global level right now, the falling away that's absolutely going on and the the kind of reconnecting into a different way of being that we're we're moving towards yeah. which was so exciting i feel like there was just a room full of you know the leaders of tomorrow so yeah. so grateful and yeah i would say that's a lot of 55 energy yeah totally and that that was the timing right yeah as well when you showed up for it i don't even know if you even constantly like realized that I did it not yeah. at the time and it's so cool because it's just something like I think we got a few requests in HDX so it was just yeah. kind of put, put into my calendar and then um, as per usual I think it was the Monday of the week I'm in the shower I'm like oh okay that's the way I have to um, deliver it and it all just happened so again I feel like I was just riding the wave of the transits without even realizing yeah that. it's so intuitive isn't it yeah I like quite often even as I'm pulling everything together for this conversation. And I'm like, oh, right, yeah. I, like I was looking back at um, some of the outer planets for February. So we had the 24 in Jupiter for the entire month. And this is kind of what's well, ras rationalisation. And I really think about it as one step forward, two step backwards, or two step forwards, one step backwards. And I'm like, 
oh gosh, that the month really did feel a lot like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, I had a big launch in February for my frequency project uh, program, which is teaching human design for marketing. And I, that was such an interesting launch compared to others that I've had where I came out the strongest I've ever been, um, biggest masterclass, most live attendees, most engaged. It was insane. So good. Most people signed up fast. And then as we moved into gate 30 and things for me felt shadowy, I, it also went quiet. And right up until the car closed, and interestingly, that was when Gate 55 came in. And then after car closed, people signed up without me realising that I'd left it open. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I I feel like those weird things, like a lot of people in my business is those weird things that just, like, like, you have no idea. And I went from being like, this two step forwards, one be- step backward energy to, oh, I ended up, that was my biggest launch for this program by 40%. Wow. Like how, how did that just unfold? Um, yeah. And yeah, so that's a, a really great example of this two step forward, one step backwards energy that we had all month. Uh, so that was going on for Jupiter. Saturn moved into 37. So it has been that what you know what you would refer to as more community centric vibe and love of the community celebrating the community i mean you know saturn is a different placement though it is more of a making sure you pay heed to this kind of kind of part of what's a priority for you so i think yeah. um that's continuing into early march as well and then we had the, and we, we continue to have with the nodes where we've got uh, the south node is in 51 and the north node is in 57. So it's like this, like waking up and leaning into more intuition, yeah. uh, which I think is, is beautiful and going to be persistent through this month as well. Yeah. I, you know, I love that as well because I often think of the, you know, the 51 to the 57, this journey um from you know the ego to the spirit you know it's that where it goes where the actual channel tra- travels mm-hmm. and so for me it's it's also this time of when i see those two together it's like okay it's a time from being focused on where i'm where i'm in fear and transitioning that into love like moving away from the fear and into the love um not that that's necessarily 50 51 is all bad because it's great um, it's this awakening energy. It's like, as I move towards love, what can I learn from this? What can I initiate? What can I start? What can I be instead? Um, but yeah, when I see those two together, you know, it's, it, it's almost, and because it comes from the will center, the ego center, and it ends in the G center and the love of the spirit. It's like that, that, I'm sorry, it doesn't end in the G center. It ends in the spleen with the 57, um, it's like that going from the ego to the intuition, from the maybe the masculine to the feminine. Like it's that real polarity energy for me. Mm, I love that. And I think there's a lot to contemplate around how is that feeling right now and yeah. asking yourself to move from this more, let's call it egocentric energy. Yeah, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Just no, it's like material it's, plane. It's three yeah. D reality. It's the stuff that we need to live our lives. Absolutely, uh, and then moving towards this very intuitive nature. Like, how do we do that as humans? As we evolve, as we grow, how do we become more focused on our intuition and less on the material world? Yeah, and you know, it's really interesting you say that because I think that's a really. Um, I feel that happening in my life. Like I, mm-hmm. I know I go on about this a lot on the podcast and I have for years, but I'm back at that place again where I'm like, I want to, although I'm hugely intuitive, I'm not, it's hard to explain. It's like, I'm not deliberate or, or consciously creating my intuition. I'm very like, Oh, it's there and it does its thing. And oh, there it is again. But I'm back again at that place where, okay, I want to build a more conscious relationship 
with mm-hmm. my my intuition. So Beautiful. yeah, that feels. And I suppose the fifty one as well is like awakening that energy of maybe even me experiencing it in the material world a little bit more. Mm. I don't know. It just kind of came in. Oh, I like that. (laughs) That's really interesting. Mm. Insightful. Mm. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And and keep dancing with this. Like it's, you know, it's the movement into the North Node right through until I think it's mid-May. Wow. So definitely, yeah, some, and I think of this as a movement. It's like a from and to. So how do we move ourselves from and to? I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the the bigger planets that we kind of dance with in February. We, of course, we always look at the 55 and we've talked a bit about the 55 and the fact that that, that came through in, it was the 20th to the 24th of March, sorry, February. Uh, and, yeah, and look, it's still the emotional centre and if you're somebody that has felt more emotional than usual over the last few weeks, it has been solar plexus, solar plexus, solar plexus, gate-wise. We had mm-hmm. first the 30, then we had the 55, and then the 37, which is where we are now. And as we move into March, it does start to change, but we still have some solar plexus gates to go through, and some of those have some really beautiful keynotes. Uh, and also, if you are if you are somebody that may avoid lots of emotion like I do, then it's good to be conscious of this and think about the the fact that the the shadow and the gift all exist on the same frequency and how can you lean into your knowledge of human design and the gene keys and look for when this is showing up for me, how do I move myself towards that higher frequency energy? How do I see it as an opportunity to be aware, to be conscious of it not just being uh your reality but being part of the background frequency and an opportunity to move yourself and i think that that's what's so important about what we're doing here and the work that we're doing is like you are not a puppet you know and it's important that we remember that we exactly as you say about like we have a choice like if this energy if this frequency is there it's there our choice is how do we how do we allow it to express through us do we do it from fear or we do it from you know from love so i love that so important yeah and you know it's tricky life is tricky it doesn't matter how successful you are there's light and shade there are more emotional times and the more that we are connected and aligned and aware of what is coming up and how to navigate that the better that's a big part of what i love about working with human design and the gene key. So talking about March now, moving right in there, as we begin the month, we in Jupiter move from, well, it's kind of early in the month. We're still in the 24 right now, but we're moving to gate two. Now, I don't know about you, but gate two has a lot of love. I have it in my chart. It is defined. Uh, It's part of my one and only channel, channel of the beat. And what it brings forward for me and what I'm excited about this placement for in Jupiter is that it's very friendly to manifestation, to being intentional in the actions you're taking, but having faith and trusting that you will receive that which you desire. Oh my God, this is so crazy because this morning when I was in my doing my meditation, I'm like, oh, I just need to focus on receiving. I've written it in my book. It's like just <laughs> receive, receive, receive. I love this. Like you can't make this stuff up. I know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah, universe. Thank you, gate two. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yay, 24 to gate two. That's beautiful. I love that. I love. I, I actually love that. was on someone's podcast this morning as well and I was looking at his um, – the guy who's like the tech for his podcast, looking at his chart, and he had the two in his personality son as well. Like, Love it. Again. And, and yeah, that's, that's coming up for us in early May. So, you know, that's not too far off into the future either. Yeah. It's going to be even more dominant in the sun. But, yeah, Jupiter, I mean, this is this is blessings. This is yeah, attracting yeah. success. And to have Jupiter and two together, I think that's mm. amazing energy for manifesting. I agree. 
Yeah, I agree. And I think I love to look and I know that we're sort of, we're looking at Jupiter a lot as well and we love to focus on it. And I think we can also use that from a Gene Keys perspective because, you know, the per, your personality Jupiter is the pearl. Absolutely. You know, so it's kind of like what you're going to get from being in alignment with your gifts and talents and life's work and core, uh, your core talent and culture. Yeah. So for me as well, it's like, wow. So when we're being ourselves and we're aligning, you know, right now, you, you know, you talk about it's a great time for manifestation. However, if we also look at this through that frame of the pearl, like, yeah, resources, that's what we're going to receive. Um, nurturing support um all of those great things so yeah it's a so bring it's a that on fertile time yeah exactly uh, bring it on bring that on yeah uh because there's some other more interesting placements coming up in march so the next one i, was, I would mention is that saturn uh which is we're early in the month it's in 37 but it's about to move into the 63 which is the gate of doubt, which mm -hmm. I also like to think of curiosity. What about you? How do you, how do you define the 63? Well, I love, I, like, the, the gate of doubt for me, the way I sort of um, look at it is it's like, mm, this isn't working, you mm -hmm. know? Like, it's like, yeah. for me, the doubt is, well, this isn't working or this won't work or... So, yeah, I think curiosity is definitely a large part of that. It, it's that the thought, like, the initiation of, like, hmm, I need to think of this differently. I need to think about this differently. I need to yeah. come at this differently. Um, so not doubt as in, you know, you're completely, I mean, in your shadow you can be, but yeah. so you're not completely overwhelmed by, oh, my God, it doesn't work. It's more like, yeah. oh my God, or self this doesn't work, so how will it work? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. a perfect way to look at it. Uh, and it is in Saturn, so just more, you know, challenges come to us in Saturn, so more reason to even face this energy if it does show up in its more shadow form which may be self-doubt and consider that this is showing up for you on purpose because there's an opportunity here to optimize to tweak to change things up and find the better way yeah and i think also with saturn i always think about how you know with your saturn return so with saturn the consequences come when you're out of alignment with your values with your innate structures the things that are correct for you so i would also go as far to say is like when there is a challenge ask yourself exactly that like where am i out of alignment with my values here because it's going to be showing you you know maybe you're criticizing yourself for something that actually is incorrect for you you know you're trying to force yourself to do something or be something where really satin's like this is not correct for you yeah. um, so i think whenever we have satin like yeah it, it brings challenge but it, it brings challenge only when we are out of alignment with you know the structures and values that are correct for us um you know it's like you will go through a set and return very, very smoothly if every time something comes up, you're like, okay, I'm going to lean into that and, and change or do whatever or come back to my heart-driven, is that correct, or my strategy and authority, correct, incorrect, whatever. So then it's easy. It's easy to navigate through because you actually yeah. listen to the consequences that Saturn is de de delivering. And then if you keep listening, then, then Saturn actually – is this big, powerful energy that delivers you to the other side, if you like. Yeah, it's like a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it, because we kind of looked at Jupiter and the two and there's such a perfect marriage. And I think I would say the same thing about uh, the Saturn and the 63 as well. They're, they're also, you know, there, there's a, a beautiful synergy between this planetary influence and the gate influence. Uh, an opportunity to really look at what feels like it's not working and that comes from both places and identify or have curiosity for, right, well, if this isn't quite right, what's working, what isn't, and how do I change up the way that I'm approaching it or we're approaching it? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Then we have, what else is going on in March? We continue to, and I, I've shared this already, but we're continuing with that um, 51 and the 57 all month. So intuition, intuition. 
And then in the 55, which we always take a little look into, so we're still having some 55 showing up in March, but it's, it's in quite different placements. So mid-month from the 12th to the 16th of March, the 55 is going to be in Venus. So oh, that sounds great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'm what does freedom in relationships say look like? 12th to the 14th or something? Yeah, it's the 12th to the 16th. Uh, so oh, that could okay. affect things like seeing this more abundant spirit in your relations, whether that's family, whether that's love, whether that's community. Um, that's, that's the theme of these two things coming together. And then we have it moving into Mars from the 23rd to the 28th of March. So quite a different yeah. role going on there. Yeah, yeah. From the feminine, the love, the values, the relationships yeah. to like, I'm going to smack you in the face with it so you can learn a lesson, Mars. Yeah, let's go into your cold wound and have a look at how this can play out from a shadow yeah. perspective right now. Yeah. What do you need to learn about the 55? Because you're about to. Yeah, but you can also see Mars as, as a place that uh, is about what drives you and, and motivation. Mm -hmm. And so the gift in here, I think, is a very big driver for not just you and I, but probably a lot of people in this community, which mm -hmm. is the gift of freedom, which yeah. is rising up the collective consciousness, being more open to universal laws and someone yeah yeah I love that yeah so maybe it is this time where the you know the the because I always also think of Mars as like the personal development planet you know it's yeah. helping you evolve so yeah maybe it's a time of evolving freedom again mm. sign me up I'm in I'm totally down for that yeah <laughs> so you know the bigger planetary picture I think is really quite positive there's you know there's elements in there to be aware of as we go through the month uh, and we're we're next we're going to go to the sun because 70 percent of the energy is going to come through the gates that are transiting through the sun yeah but I, I love setting the scene with the bigger planets and you know they're very powerful so it's good to consider these these aspects first so then we go well the first thing that happens once we come out of the gate 37 in March is we get a week or six days where we're not in the solar plexus and we do go into this yeah. same gate 63. So high notes of the 63. I think we've explored this quite a lot because it has an out of planet uh, prominent prominency in this month, but it really is about having this more inquisitive approach curiosity inquisitivity inquisitivity you know that word um, uh, and seeing doubt as a positive message from the universe yeah i know i like it for me it's like the line three thing yeah being like hey this isn't working mm, yeah but what will you yeah know? it's like how do i make this work how do i um you know shift it change it experiment yeah. with it yeah I love it's that. so interesting because I really woke up this morning thinking about something that is a huge project of mine that I'm like it's not feeling like it's lighting me up enough right now and you know if I'm going to be true to my human design strategy and authority which I am I need to relook at that but yeah. I had already gone to well this isn't something that I want to completely turn off so what can I do to change it? <laughs> it's like, oh, right on cue. We're about to move into this gate, um, and we're we're also yeah, it's com it's coming up in in the, in Saturn as well. So yeah, you can't make this stuff up. You really can't. And I think no. it's so like I find it fascinating how in so many cases, like yes, it's bang on when the transit happens, but I also notice like the the higher my consciousness goes, the higher everyone's consciousness goes. It's like it happens before it's like your whole body is like this is coming so i'm getting you prepared for it you know you can yeah, see it's interesting, you can feel it isn't coming it? before it even drops and when it drops it's like go time 
So as we move out of the 63, which this, by the way, is in the head center. So very different, as I said, it, it's not a solar plexus energy. But after the 63, we're going back into some really big solar plexus energy. So the next gate that shows up in March, which is going to be active between the 8th and the 12th, is the 22. So this is another really big feeling gate. It's known as the gate of openness. Um, some of the high notes, I would say, is about really following your passion and being prepared to ride the roller coaster alongside with it and keep going, knowing that it's worth it, knowing mm -hmm. that when you're on your true path, when you're on purpose and you are in a place of that passion of yours, your, sorry, when you are in a place where your passion and your life's work come together, that it is the correct path for you. But like all of life, it won't always be smooth. Yeah. 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 And I think this is so important as a topic because I, I know that especially, and a lot of the people listening, I know you guys have, you know, been on your journey for a while. However, I know that a large part, like I'm going to say a decade, the first decade of my journey, I was so looking for, you know, no challenge, no, str not struggle. I mean, I don't struggle at all, but, you know, I was, I was really convinced that I could be without challenge and that's impossible. Like that's not the point of being human. The point of being human is to evolve and grow. Um, but my perception changed, you know, like the more I lent into that, well, my line three, but the more I lent into, well, this is this is fun. This like I'm finding out who I am and what I can do and what I'm made of. And wow, this challenge might have been hard in the beginning, but look what's happening. Look at the impact it's having, or look at the the yeah. lives I'm, you know, impacting, or the the business that I'm creating, or the relationships that I have, or how my kids are evolving. Yeah. And I think that that's the percep perceptive shift that our passion is important and it's not always going to be easy, but the journey to overcome the hard stuff and the person we become, that's like, that's it. And I think that's, that's when we have that perception. Then as I always say, like we only have high quality problems and we still yeah. have them, but they're high quality. Still have them, but they're high quality. And yeah, I, I always think about the fact that you wouldn't appreciate the joy, the moments of complete elation if you didn't have the contrast. Like you have to go through difficult times. And this is true no matter how hugely successful you are, how much money you have, how famous you are, it is still the same for every single one of us. Exactly. We all have light and shade and it is as it should be. We would not feel those immense feelings of joy. Exactly. Exactly. We live in a yeah. universe of polarity. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I do suspect being this non-emotional type that I am, that I'm almost anticipating this is going to be a more emotional week uh, or six days. Uh, and to, you know, think about it with grace yeah. <laughs> because of the gene keys. That, that's really, it is about graciousness in the gift frequency and, and in the acidic state as well. Yeah. I love grace. I love the word. Oh, isn't it a great word? Yeah, I just love it. Yeah, if I I don't have kids, but if I ever had a daughter, it was definitely in my mind as as a as a name. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. Uh, okay, and so from there we move into another solar plexus gate, which is the thirty six, uh, and this is you know another like oh crisis gate of crisis. Uh, and again, this is more a word that speaks to the shadow of the gate when there is the whole spectrum that comes yeah. with this frequency. Uh, and I, I really think about this gate as being about human evolution. And you just said this word, it's, it's about evolving. It's about having compassion through the evolution. And I think self-compassion is a big part of this one. Yeah, yeah. And I think that I love, because I've got the 36, it's actually in my pearl as well. Oh, so, wow. You know, like, I know. So I'm like, what? Like, I get, I don't know, what? I was really almost irritated about it when I first okay. kind of yeah. became aware of it. And then what I have actually learned over the years is that 
what it's all about is compassion. It's about really like the 36 is a person or an energy that gets being human mm. and has the capacity to hold space and compassion for all the darkness, all the challenge, wow. all the shadow, all the trauma. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the 36 is such an important player in this time. You know, mm. it doesn't make, it's not afraid of the darkness. Yeah. Um, it can hold space. And at the same time, it brings, you know, one of the greatest human capacities and that's compassion. You know, that, yeah. that, that thing that, you know, um, that really actually sets the the human race apart is is compassion. It's one of these emotions. It's very human. So, although the thirty six, as you say, like the name of it in human design or in um, the I Ching, is actually representative of more the shadow. I think yeah. it's an incredibly important and powerful uh, gate in especially this time in history. Yeah, and I think it's it's actually a blessing to your community that you have this in a prominent place so you have done some deep inquiry around this yeah. and you know it's part of your life's work is to hold space and have compassion because the reason we're drawn to personal development and I consider human design to be a personal development tool is because we are conscious of the darkness and we want to evolve and so as as people that are coaches and you know many other healing modalities this is such a big part of it, being able to hold space for people that have been through trauma, for you know, all of the darkness that, that resides within humankind and be a safe harbour, if you like. Yeah. And a, yeah. a big part of that is, is compassion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And to also just to understand that, you know, I know for me I was afraid of my darkness. I was ashamed of it. I was I honestly thought I was the only one that was this horrible on the inside or had these um, horrid thoughts or, you know, had this shame. And, you know, typical line three, I've just learnt that, nope, everyone does. Sorry. Every single thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> which means that when you are the person that is holding this space not only for yourself but for someone else, there's no judgment. Because it's like, yeah. yep, I've been there, I get it. Um, yeah. And that's what we all need right now. You know, it's what's really bringing the human race together. So, yeah, it's a yeah. super important energy. So what a beautiful solar plexus gate to come through at the end of the long stretch of solar plexus energy. And and that's that's the final sol solar plexus gate that I can see at least in the next few months coming through. So, yeah, and maybe even... Yeah, and maybe even for the, you know, the non-emotional beings, that's going to be a time for you to be compassionate with yourself, you know, like because maybe you have ridden the extra hard roller coaster while all these solar plexus gates are processing. And, um, yeah, so it's just a reminder, like, just be really, really kind and compassionate with yourself. You've done great. You've made it. You've nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some very different energy coming through after that. And I will remind you, everybody listening, that we still have this beautiful kind of Jupiter essence in the gate too. Yeah, through all yeah. of this month, well, at least two-thirds of this month, we have this intention, manifestation, receptive energy in a really prominent place as well. So despite these ups and downs and, and potential emotional times, there's a bigger force at play here as well. So we get to choose, right, which, which energy is true for us. Yeah, and also and to be nurtured by that. You know, I love that. Like yeah. just let yourself be nurtured by the two energy that is yeah. out in the consciousness soup. Yes, exactly. And then the next gate coming through is, is one that I think will feel really different. It's in the G Centre. It is gate 25. So this is coming through between the 19th and the 24th of the month. So some of the, well, the, the human design gate name is the gate of innocence. But some of the keynotes here are about healing, about acceptance and universal love. I mean, mm. beautiful, beautiful energy to kind of move into. And, you know, with it being G center, it, it's love, identity, direction. So I think it's going to feel like 
a coming home, uh, a reconnection to self. You've kind of gone through this compassion potentially and, and some of that maybe in self-compassion. And then it's like, okay, now how do I, and the, the word nourish comes to me, which you just said, how do I nourish self to move forward in a new identity, in a new way of being? Mm, I love that. And isn't it fascinating? I was just thinking like, oh, isn't it funny that it's the 25? And just before I got the 57 and the 25 mixed up, like, again, I feel like my intuition is two steps ahead of me instead of yeah. you know, like, just relax, Emma. Let it all happen the way it's meant to. Yeah, don't overthink it. Yeah, I love that. The yeah. 25 is a beautiful energy. Bring it on. Bring that one on, yeah. Later, later in the month that's coming through. And then we're going to go into an Ajna, an Ajna gate, which is gate 17. Oh, uh, 17. I have the 17. 17's pretty cool, right? It, it's very insights. It's opinions. It's seeing the bigger picture. Yeah. So navigating this, we've kind of gone through compassion into identity, purpose, and then into, okay, let's see the bigger picture now. What What is going on more broadly and what is my opinion of that? Mm, I love that. And I love like the 17 I've spoken to so much on this podcast because I think it was one of the first gates that I just, you know, when you first come to human design and there's a few that just pop out and the 17 and the 18 were these gates that just stood out for me, which is interesting because they're both in undefined centers. Yeah. Um, and I've got the 17 in my IQ. Okay. Um, so I think that's interesting, like having that that bigger picture, that mental energy, and it's also in, you know, the, the almost like the the mindset, the mental mm -hmm. uh, mask that I created, you know, maybe as a, a late teenager to keep my heart yeah. protected. But the big thing is that I've learned from the 17 and you hear, like I say this all the time, like unconsciously, not on purpose. Um, well, in my opinion, it's just my opinion. I want to share it. And I'm always super curious about other people's opinions because mm. there's just, they're just different perspectives, you know. Totally. Nothing is 100% right, wrong, good, bad. It just is. So, yeah, I think that when we have this governing energy of the 17, it's super important to understand that, yes, you have an, uh, a, an opinion about something and that's important and following your strategy and authority to, to share that, that's great. And at the same time, being open to other people's opinions. It's that's yeah. I think, especially where we are in history, uh, we we've got to move away from that 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 um, scarcity mindset. You know, like being really attached to your opinion as the only thing that's correct. It's like being yeah. more curious. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. The the word perspectives is just. I feel like I say that word every single day because it is those that are more aware, right, that are more curious and conscious and on a personal development path, I think are very attuned to the fact that we only deal with other people's perspectives and our own perspective, that there is yeah. no yeah. truth. Exactly. And so it's something that I'm always working with in, inside my mind, my very open mind and Ashna, by the way. <laughs> it's like yeah, I feel whatever's coming at me, I'm like, but that is your perspective. That yeah. is just your perspective. And you can't see that this is my perspective and that you're not necessarily right. <laughs> yeah. And that's it, you know. It's like, and I think as line fives, we need to double down on this, like having such an awareness of, other people's perspectives or projections or yeah. like it's your stuff and that's super cool but I and all of us need to not take on other people's like just not take other people's stuff personally what they say yeah. what they do the way they act towards us even though sometimes it can feel very directly so uh, hard yeah at us it, it's not it's 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 how that other person sees the world or perceives the yeah. world and yeah. um yeah it's just absolutely it's just a mm. uh, one suggestion it's just their opinion reality. exactly <laughs> it's just their it's opinion whatever it is yeah absolutely and then speaking of the 21 well the 21 comes through next and it's just for a couple of days at the end of march um and then it'll continue into uh april so this gate is in the heart we've touched on it already it is so it's a very willful kind of gate it is half of the channel of money. 
so there's certainly some resourcefulness here. There is, uh, there's, I, I would say there's a sense of pushing, uh, in, in a way it is a motor center. It, it's pushing towards, I can do this. I will figure it out. I can be resourceful and less so than it's all about the money, but it, it has some ambition undertones and, and some authority tones, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think overall the word that I would use uh, is resourcefulness. Mm. Mm, I love that. And I think so. I always think of, I can't remember who, someone early on in my journey, one of my teachers talked about it as the accountant. So I no. also think about the 21 as like, Whenever that energy is at play, it's a great time for you to get your money stuff sorted, like be the accountant, yeah. like be all over it, uh, which yeah. is very, what dates did you say that is? Because I feel yeah, like that's right, it. it's right at the end, the, um, the last couple of days of the month. Amazing. Of March and also into early April. Awesome. So, yeah, mark your calendar. That's yep. a really good time to get into your money stuff. Love it. Get it organized. Get on top of it. <laughs> exactly. Love it. Yeah. So that's what's happening with the sun during March. So bigger picture, as I said, lots of solar plexus energy. And then it starts mixing things up towards the end of the month. We, as we move towards April, we get into a little bit more sacral energy. But it's not it's not a big run like we've just had with the solar plexus. It's a few gates are in there. Yeah. Um but the other thing we will take a little peek at is Mercury and what's going on with our Mercury gate. So the first thing to know is because of the way uh, Mercury being so much faster than the sun, as we've started doing this podcast, Mercury's been following, but it's overtaken at this point. So at this point, the gates that are showing up in Mercury, we've just been through. So we're going to find that what we're experiencing in the sun placement when it comes to communications it's already been so some of the stuff where you said i feel like i'm experiencing that now ahead mm. this could be your mercury yeah because mercury's yeah. coming in earlier so for instance me um thinking about this gate of doubt or curiosity uh i need to check this but it's in it's probably in mercury right now or within 24 hours yeah, so it's, right. it's going to come through first. So we have gate 63 right at the beginning of the month. And, yeah, that's that's probably, if not today, it'll be coming through from tomorrow. I love that because it also makes me think it's like, so if Mercury is there first, we're going to be communicating about it, we're going to be talking about yeah. it, and then when yeah. the energy's there, we'll be ready to act on it, you know? Yeah, and, and it's Mercury. funny because I always think, you know, I have thought it's great to be the other way around. It's like I talk, I like get into it, I think about it, and then I communicate it. Yeah. But this is almost like what I what I think we've both been talking about today. It's almost like there's a little bit of this what feels intuitive in that it's already coming through. Yeah. Um, because it is already moving into a prominent placement. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It almost feels like being an emotional authority, you know, like, Mm. Um, because being an emotional authority, I feel like that's how we a lot more often make decisions. Like we, we're having the the communication, we're talking about it, we're processing it. Like we're aware, we've got the awareness of the decision. Yeah. But we go through this, and I know because I've got the thirty four twenty, a lot of my process is speaking things out loud. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's almost like that process of the emotional solar plexus. Like we're just talking it out, we're getting our heads around it, our hearts around it, our energy around it, and then when the sun placement comes through, boom, we can shine yeah, bright, baby. Yeah. Absolutely. So this, because of this, the gates that are running through Mercury are following. So we can pretty much expect the same thing, right? So it's going to be gate sixty-three, then the twenty-two the 36, the 25, the 17, the 21, like every single gate that we've just been through is showing up in Mercury, but in advance. Yeah. Then we are going to see some of the April gates coming through into Mercury. So the, the, the new gates, let's say, that we won't experience or haven't talked about because they're moving through the sun as well are happening from the 19th, the gate of shock, gate 51 comes through. 
So again, this is a bit of a dress rehearsal for, for what's going to come through in April. Uh, this gate is another well centre gate. So we've got two in the heart um, back to back. So we move, as we've spoken about, we go into the 21 in the sun transit. And then after that happens in the Mercury transit, the next gate is the 51. So this is the gate that yeah. Ra Uruhu was born under. It is at its heart a, around awakening. It's about waking yeah. people up. That's the way I interpret it. How about you? Yeah, yeah, I think that's spot on. Like I always, um, yeah, I think of it as kind of like the smack in, your, smack in the face you always needed, you know? Yeah. Like it's the one that kind of just... And I think like the higher expression of it, it's it's a lot more gentle, but the shadow yeah. can be a little bit of a punch in the face. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing I was thinking, I was thinking about, you know, talking about Mercury and Mercury being all about communication. One of the things I'd like to throw out there, because I know I'm going to be very focused on this, is our language is creating our reality. So mm. as we go through, you know, as we follow Mercury, as Mercury is showing up, and these energies are in our communication. And let's take the 51. What language are we using? But let's yeah. be very, very aware of the language that we're using because we can use, you know, like shocking shadow yeah. language or we yeah. can use awakening conscious language. Beautiful. So, I love that. Right? Being really yeah. conscious of the language that we're using so that we are creating more of what we want and less of what we don't want. Yeah, and that and that completely speaks to well, gate two being in Jupiter, yeah. and it speaks to our throat center and our voice being what we speak to, we manifest. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Okay, so then after the fifty-one, we get into a couple of the sacral gates that are going to be coming through. Uh, in the sun placement as well in April. So next we're going to go into gate 42. Uh, growth or increase, right? Hooray for all of us business owners that are like, oh, when are we having some of that growth gates coming yeah, through? I'll have more growth. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be having those growth conversations potentially uh, from the 23rd to the 27th of March. So that's a great time to be thinking about where you're going, where you know how you're going to grow from a business perspective, potentially, and personal growth. It. Uh, it's also an energy of celebration. So when you when you get a bit deeper into it, it's like persistence. I think is a word that I would use here. It's seeing things through, trusting that by seeing them through, despite the roller coaster, that you know you will reach the point of celebration, completion, and then have that moment of, wow, I've achieved so much. How do we make it even bigger and better? Exactly. And, you know, if I think, you know, probably my top three things about success, one of them is perseverance. You know, <laughs> human design gives us strategy and authority that tells us what to persevere with. Yeah. Um, and I think that one of the, the trip-ups that people have is they're like, oh, well, I just don't love it anymore. I'm not lit up by it. Yeah, but is it just because you've hit resistance, you're out of your comfort zone, or are you really out of alignment? So I think that that's, yeah. that's great energy. Like what do yeah. we actually need to be persevering with? Because it's going to mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable, but it can it still is. feel And we're going to have this placement of the 63 in Saturn all month as well. So there you go. It's time to get curious uh, exactly. about, yeah, which parts of it could potentially evolve and create more alignment versus letting go of things that are actually uh, serving your highest good and the, and the highest good of others and just need to rethink potentially. Yeah. And, but you know, again, that would be that whole condition piece for me, like letting go of the things you think you should do versus yeah. the things that you, you know, are, de are you're designed to be doing or good, that are correct for you. Totally. Yes. Love it. Um, and then we just have one more gate coming through, which which will be happening in April as well, and it is my personality sum, which is the gate three. Uh, so I'm like, oh, we're coming up to my birthday month. Oh, we're coming up to my birthday month again. <laughs> <laughs> but the gate three at the end of the month, now this is the gate of difficulty at the beginning. Uh, I, I, you know, I've spent so much time getting to know this gate. For me, it's more about finding the gold. I call it the alchemist. It's like 
no matter how difficult a situation is, there's always a deeper reason that you're leaning into it. And if you persist, persevere, mm. then you will find the gold. And, you know, in the gene keys, it's about innovation. Yeah. So finding an innovative way to move through. And then my favourite part of this game is that it comes with this essence of innocence or play, childlike wonder yeah. when you yeah. have moved through. So that that's going to be coming through Mercury and then later in, on in into April as well. You know what I also love about the three? Like I've got a number of people in my life that have the three and one of the things you guys do, and I think I feel like human design helps this, is you are so comfortable in the chaos, you know? It's like these are people that at the moment that they're like, oh, like chaos is actually a part of my superpower. Okay, cool. And it's like they can let go of needing to be in control of the chaos because they're kind of like, well, I've never been in control of chaos. It's always been it's here as part of my superpower. Um, so I think that that's also something to be aware of if it's not your, not something you've got activated yeah. in your chart, like, just be okay with the freaking chaos because this, yeah. you know, I watch it from a distance as this yeah. three energy is like, yeah, it's fine. And it all just works out. They work it out. So yeah, it's yeah. cracking me up because of our conversation at the beginning about me renting out my van and it was such chaos. The last 24 hours of my life have been such freaking chaos. And in the middle of all that, um, for you, for you listeners, I said yes to someone renting my camper van on the day, and what unfolded was 24 hours of stress and like being Yvette the tradies. One of my my friends called me that because I'm always in the chaos. I'm always figuring things out. I'm at Bunnings at 6:30 in the morning. I'm learning how to install headlights on YouTube. Chaos. Yeah. And in the middle of all of that, I spoke to a client, and she was like, "You, I just don't know how you do it." Like, how do you even, like, she's like, you must be so resilient. And I'm like, yeah, I am because it's always like this. It's yeah. always a level of chaos. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing, you know, again, what human design gives us is the, the permission to relax into, um, into these things. You know, I know for me with my line free, it was one of the things that set me free, you know, like yeah. just, just, just relax into the fact that it's like winning or learning. It just is. So yeah, you know what? It. Yeah, for me, just as, as, and this has just dropped into my mind right now. And and you know, for any of you with a with a gate three that are curious about how do you see the gift in it as well, it it really is that piece around delayed gratification. Mm. For me, I feel like what happens is things are hard. But I know they're hard and I know that it's worth it. Yeah. So even yeah. with this example, that booking was for four thousand dollars. Yeah. Four thousand dollars, right? For for what is essentially a hands off process. Yeah. <laughs> Usually more so. But it <laughs> I'm still like, you know what, this is really hard. I'm really stressed. But then last night, two thousand dollars, fifty percent of the money landed in my account, and I'm like, yeah. And also it, it's now going to be totally fine and easeful. And so that's that's the other side, right? It's like yeah. we know that things that feel hard, especially if you're aware of this delayed gratification piece, often lead to exactly what we want more of. Well, I, I think that ability to delay gratification, it's, again, one of the highest principles of success. You know, the people mm -hmm. that really succeed have that ability to do that, that they yeah. can keep working for no reward because in the long run they know the reward is great and again yeah. for me even though i don't have the three i definitely it's been something that i've always been around i've always seen the power of perseverance the power of yeah. you know turning up that delayed gratification and you know that going back to that study i've spoken about so many times on the podcast the marshmallow study with the kids that, you know, they're given one that they can have now or that yep. they can wait yeah. like even a minute or two minutes for the person to come in, they can have two. And then the kids who waited for the second one, which were the much smaller percentage of the group, they, um, when tracked as adults, they were the ones that had a lot greater success. Yeah. Um, and in this day and age, we do not know as a race, um, in the, especially in the Western world, we do not know how to delay gratification. Our children yeah. don't know how to okay. delay gratification. and that's an issue. That's a, that is a big issue. Um, we need to be building that muscle. So 
Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. There's some real gold in, in the three, whether you have it or not. Yeah, it's got lots yeah. to teach us. I love Amazing. it. Amazing. Well, that's it. That's the wrap for March and the transit. Brilliant. It sounds like another amazing month coming up. Um, I'm excited. I'm yeah, looking forward too. to how uh, March will unfold. We've had a big, you know, it's really interesting. You talk about the 24, the two steps forward, the one step back. Like I've had such a big start to 2024. Um, and in the last uh, week or so, just uh, something that I had left in the hands of someone I should have taken responsibility mm -hmm. for, but I didn't. And, you know, all this success and I've just been handed a significant challenge, financial a challenge. shit sandwich? Yeah, a bit of a <laughs> shit sandwich. Um, so I definitely feel that. But one of the great yeah. wins already, you know, this is my 36, one of the great wins already is, you know, I've been handed a very significant challenge and I'm like, it's fine. I always work it out. It always yeah. fixes itself faster than I ever imagine it will. It's all going to be okay. So just it watching is. my entire psyche, even my my nervous system, you know, because I wear an aura ring and I'm paying a lot of attention to my um, my um, HRV, HRV um, at the moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> like I'm such a classic. I know what these things are right up until the moment that I doubt myself and my, and my Ashley goes, poof, you can't have that anymore. Um, Look, so, you and so me that, both, it's quite fun having two open heads and Ajna's sitting together on a podcast. And then... I know, right? <laughs> it's just um, yeah, hopeless. Anyway, it's my heart rate variability. There you go. The HRV, I was right yeah. the first time. Yeah, there you go. And um, a lot of the meditation that I've been doing has been increasing that and it's, it's you, you want to increase your variability, not oh, decrease. Right. Um, and when this big shit sandwich was delivered to me, I had one night of stressful sleep. And then everything yeah. just went boop, straight back to my very resilient, oh, um, yeah. you know, all the good things. And I was like, wow, like it's not just talk. Like I have the physical biofeedback from my body that it's like, yeah. yep, she's got this. We've got this. It's all going to be okay. She's totally able to re-regulate quickly. It's yeah. all okay. And it yeah. is, it's always going to be okay. Yeah. And I think that, that that is also for all of you out there listening, it's one of the keys to success, you know. I remember a mentor saying to me, you don't want to get too excited about anything and you don't want to get too down about anything. And I was at the time I was like, oh, I don't like that because I want to get yeah. really like pumped up and excited. I mean, I'm an emotional being, people. Yeah. But I actually, <laughs> you know, over the years I've, got, I've gone, hmm, you're actually right because the more I raise my consciousness, the difference between being elated about something happening and being disappointed about something happening or like – there's actually not this huge swing. It's like, that's mm. great. Um, yeah. Or, yeah, that's shit. But it's still like my consciousness and how much joy I experience in every day, that just stays high, you know, most yeah. of the time. So, yeah, I think that's a really fascinating piece. But anyway, mm. I have MG. It's a bit more detached deviated. from, yeah, a little bit more detached from the external measures yeah. That drive happiness and more inside yourself. That's how I exactly, and that, that's that. absolutely right. You know, I think that yeah. once we realise that um, we are the thing we're looking for, you know, we are the success, we are the purpose, we are the money, we are the relationships, we are that all of it, um, and we start to champion ourselves, then it's inevitable. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. Well, Yvette, thank you. We went to end. Thank I know. You. Right. Thank you so much for today's episode. I've loved chatting to you as always. Um, my microphone's really good, so if you guys caught any of my grumbling stomach, uh, sorry about that because I'm starving. Oh, starving. Um, Let's get off now and go and eat some lunch. Yeah, better go eat yeah. some lunch. Um, <laughs> thanks, everyone. I trust you got what you needed from today, and I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.